Good day, everyone. We are back in Namibia. Today, we woke up very early to visit the famous red dunes of the Namib Desert. The Namib Desert is considered one of the oldest deserts in the world, having been dry for at least 55 million years. Well, the sun is just rising over the Cesarim. The now cliffed mountains. It's going to be a beautiful day here in the desert. We are uh, on our way now to uh, Dune 45 and to Sosus Flay. You can see everybody stopped for a photo opportunity of the sun rising. Just uh, behind us there is the dry river bed of the Chauhap River. It has been uh, flowing from the now cliffed mountains and it actually flows in all the way down to uh, Sosus Flay where we are going to. That is where the river runs completely dry into the desert. It's also another dead camel thorn tree. The river bed is uh, scattered with camel thorn trees. They are very deep tap root systems that can go up to 50 meters deep into the desert sand. So from the Sisrim gate, the dunes are numbered. So this is uh, dune number 36. This is a very beautiful dune, nice curves, beautiful shadows in this time of uh, morning. This is now the dune number 40. Yeah, this, uh, not all the dunes that you are allowed to climb. But, uh, dune 40 and dune number 45 you are allowed to climb. So this, uh, dune 40 is uh, yeah, less popular to climb. So that's why we rather stopped here. Incredible the contrast between the light color of this riverbed and the dark red sand going up to this very blue sky. Seriously incredible. Here you can almost see how high this dune is. I'm sitting right here on the ground. Top of it, it's uh, easily 100 to 150 meters high. You can see uh, Carl and Jim up there, very tiny. Yeah, climbing on the side of the dune, can get a little bit of a better scale of the size of it. People all the way up there. Oh, she's down there. Walking in the sand. Right now. Walking in the sand on the side of the dune. She's gonna slide down all the time. Beautiful ripples in the sand that the wind makes. But yeah, from walking in the sand, you get sandy shoes. I'd rather leave the sand on the dune. This is now the gravel plains of the Chauhap River that runs dry in the desert at the Sosus Flay. This is a uh, sea of red dunes scattered with gravel plains like these that runs all the way to the ocean. The Namib Desert is one of the oldest deserts in the world. 
formed millions of years of sand deposits from the Orange River that has been flowing from the center of South Africa through the country, meandering its way for almost 2,000 kilometers, washing out at the Urania Mund by the west coast. Deposited uh, all this sand, washing away with it a lot of diamonds and also iron ore content in the sand. The red color of the sand is because of the oxidation of the iron ore in the sand. The Namib Desert experiences very little to no rainfall. Between zero and about 50 millimeters of rainfall every year. Most of the moisture is received from the cold Benguela sea currents flowing from south to north along the west coast of Namibia. Some of this moisture also makes it way, its way over the dunes and the creatures and the plants in this uh, desert then survives of the moisture that is uh, coming in from the ocean. The desert is home to some of the world's highest sand dunes, particularly in the Sosses Flay area, where dunes can exceed 300 meters in height. These dunes are primarily composed of fine red-orange sand shaped by the prevailing winds. The Namib Desert is also significant for its mineral resources, including diamonds, tungsten and salt, which are mined in various parts of the desert. This old uh, camel thorn tree, giving a bit of shade, all the people waiting. to the dead flay. It's about a one and a half kilometer walk through the sand along the riverbed to get to the dead flay. You see some of his uh, old dead trees. You can literally see how popular it is to come and see the dead flay. Look at the queues of people coming in and out. All the cars parked behind us. Just over this little dune, we get to the dead flay. Look at the queue behind us. Spins. Be over the dune in a minute. Almost there. Got the dead flay, all the dead trees, all the dead uh, camel thorn trees, the dunes has cut the river into pieces so that the river can't flow anymore, preventing these trees from getting enough moisture to grow. So there's green bushes on the side, they mostly get their moisture from, yeah, from the atmosphere that comes in from the ocean. Yeah, this west coast will have a uh, fog belt for about 180 days of the year, which uh, provides enough moisture for creatures and animals to survive here in these very harsh conditions.
this is the last part of the Chauhab river that has been cut off by the desert here in Sosus Flay. There is in the top of a big daddy, highest dune in the area, 325 meters high. All surrounded by big red dunes, the dead flay. These dead camel thorn trees has been surviving this harsh, dry climate for over 900 years. The conditions here are dry enough that the wood does not rot. No insects, termites that wants to eat the wood here. There's also a type of a fungus that lives on the bark of the tree the outside of the wood of the tree that makes it uh, more resistant to the sun that will preserve it for even longer. The clay is a very popular tourist destination here in Namibia, attracting many international travelers to come and experience this beautiful place. Imagine this harsh climate to be trying to survive in this uh, unforgiving desert. It's pretty hot out here today on the dead flay. It's probably about 33 degrees Celsius. And the sun is burning down here on my face. Just trying to cover my face a little bit so I don't get completely burnt. You can see the footprints for the people who try to go down the, down the dune. We have to look at the world at a different perspective sometimes. That's why we travel. Experiences are always more valuable than any possessions. When we travel, we get out of our normal circumstances and get to look at our own lives with different eyes. And sometimes we see that our own problems are much smaller than what we make them out to be. That was a dead play. Uh, the big migration out of the dead play. Everybody <laughs> coming back for a nice fresh lunch in the parking. You can see all the tired faces behind us. Very hot today. Thank you for visiting the dead play. The best time to visit the Namib desert is from May to September, when temperatures are milder and conditions are more favorable for outdoor activities. July to November is peak tourist season, so expect more crowds. When interacting with local communities, be culturally sensitive and respectful of local customs and traditions. Greet locals politely and respect their customs. Always ask for permission before photographing local people. It is essential to arrange transportation in advance. The main entry point for the Namib Desert is Windhoek, the capital city of Namibia. Visitors can rent vehicles or book guided tours from Windhoek to the Namib. A 4x4 vehicle is highly recommended for navigating the desert terrain as many roads are unpaved and require a robust vehicle for safe travel. But it's not required. A heightened vehicle is definitely necessary. Staying hydrated is crucial in the desert environment. Carry sufficient water, especially during outdoor activities. It is advisable to avoid hiking or exploring alone. Always inform someone of your travel plans and expected return times. Secure your accommodation in advance, particularly during peak tourist seasons. It is illegal to remove any natural resources. 
such as rocks or sand from the desert. By following these instructions and being mindful of the local culture and environment, visitors can enjoy a safe and enriching experience in the Namib Desert. With its breathtaking landscapes and unique ecosystems, the Namib offers an unforgettable adventure for all who venture into its vast sands. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.